Takie 2, Georgia 1. For those of you that don't know, they want to be called Takie from now on, not Taki. If you're going to be giving us games like that, we will take it. We will take all of them. We will call you whatever you want. Takie. Shout out to Georgia, by the way. Shout out to Georgia. Georgia just came and actually, they said, even though this is our first tournament ever, this is their debut, even though this is our first ever um, game at the Euros, we are not going to let up. We are going to show you that we're here to play. Before we continue, the Celtics won the championship. It's going to be green this whole week, so get used to it. Yes, Taki, just bowling. Like, oof. this game was just insane. The way the game started, first of all, Taki started like a house on fire. They're like, we're going to put pressure on you. Last Euros, sorry, I'm trying to sort things out. Last Euros, they lost all their games. And I think they just came out saying like, no, we're not going to be, this is not going to happen again. The coach has been uh, under fire. Vincenzo Montella, uh, former Italian player, has been under fire the past few weeks, so it was very crucial that they got off to a good start, especially for the lowest-ranked team at the Euros. I mean, starting off, Taki, the first 10 minutes, they were just, like, on fire. I'm trying to remember who it was that just hit, like, a um, Khan Ayan. Like, that boy, crazy shot off the post. That was in the ninth minute. In the 10th, and then, like, in the first nine minutes, they were just going at it, going at it, and that shot... Ayan's shot was the closest they came to scoring. And I was like, yo, this is going to be a long, long day for Georgia. But credit to Georgia. There's something that they keep doing. Every time you feel like they're under a lot of pressure, they, they really just like come together and say, we need to get like a chance. And every time they get like a chance, it kind of stems the tide. You know, it kind of breaks that. It, it, it's, like, it's like in NBA when a team goes on a 10 or run and then you call a timeout. Like that's how it felt. I'm going to be using basketball references, guys. Celtics, NBA champions. Um, yeah, so they always just do something that stems the tide. So they ended up getting a chance. Um, it was a deflection. It was a good shot of Mekvabishvili. Hey! Mekvabishvili. Mekvabishvili. I've never watched him play. But yeah, this boy was, yeah, he was good. Then 24 minutes in, I think at this moment we say this was the goal of the tournament. It was no question that Romania Stanchu's goal was goal of the season. But when this one went in, when Mulder's goal went in, I was like, yo, yo, yo. That was madness. That was that was a, like a really, really crazy, crazy volley. Like the fact that he caught it so perfectly. And he just ended up uh, beating Mamadashvili. Mamadashvili had no chance. And then literally like two minutes later, oh, by the way, that's goal of the tournament so far, right? Yes. Then three minutes later, Yildiz. They attack on the right wing. I forget who crossed the ball, but Yildiz, and then the ball was touched by someone else, and then Yildiz touched it and uh, actually started at the back of the net. And I think it was Yilmaz who touched it and Yildiz finished. But had he not touched that ball, okay, maybe the defender would have gotten there. But that small touch, when he was touching the ball, honestly, Yildiz was offside. And it was just like a toe. Again, the automated offside is working. Like, I'm not even going to fault the automated offside. It, it's working really well. Um, yeah, VR called it off. And then um, at that point, I realized Taki was playing quite narrow. Taki just decided, like, if you're going to attack, we're going to attack narrow. But if you lose the ball, and I think this works in their favor because the way they play, they, they, they find themselves in defensive transition a lot, right? So defensive transition is basically when you lose the ball, how quickly do you get into a defensive formation? And can you stop them from at least coming and having a shot on goal before you actually set up, right? So that's defensive transition. Offensive transition is basically a counter. Um, so yeah, and one way Georgia was doing this is that because they were playing with the back three and wing backs, they just kept on switching from wing back to wing back. And it was, uh, what's his name? Sitaishvili and Kakabadze on either wing that they just kept switching. And I mean, they were causing problems. Honestly, they were causing problems for Turkey. And in the 32nd minute, um, for after, after almost going 2 nil down, they managed to get an equalizer. The person that really, really impressed me today and I just need to give a big shout out, is Kochorashvili. Kochorashvili, Anachora. So there was this moment, like the goal, there's this thing he does where he did like a step over. So for you guys who've played football, all of you have played football one way or another. For you, so normally you do like step over, step over, and then you go left. Or you do right, left, and then you go right. This guy did right, 
and then went right. Like, it was like in one motion. Papa, it's like he's doing a, around the world and the ball is on the ground. He just did... Chua, chua. Second one, he's out. Kind of reminds me what Mbappe did yesterday. But Mbappe did actually do around. He just did like a like a step, like almost like a, a dummy, and then he went right. And that just got the defender off guard. Just bought him a split second. To be honest, the defender was right there. But that split second was enough for him to cross the ball. And... Mikau Tadze managed to get on the end of that and make it 1-1. And at this point, I'm like, yo, yo, if this is how we're going to go, this game is going to be insane. It's going to be fire. Um, a few minutes later, like Georgia, one thing about Georgia is they they are very, they create chances quick. They don't, they don't want to, they're not slow on the ball like a Man City or an Arsenal or, you know, they want to create quick chances. They're like a Spain in that sense, right? Where it's like, one, two, we're hitting, we're getting a shot. Or one, two, three, we're getting a, you know, like a cross or something. So the three people who are really combining well were, I need to get their names. I need to get their names right. So there was, there was, there was obviously Kochoras, Kochorashvili and Kakabadze. They created a chance for Mikau Tadze, the number 22. And it was such a quick chance. And I was, I was, I was honestly, I was just blown away by how, how well they were creating chances. Um, at this point, Kvaratskilia, um, who was playing up front, now was moved to the left side. So that's now where they were really, really causing problems. Because the thing with Kvara is he really, he, he, he makes players gravitate towards him, defenders gravitate towards him. So there's spaces that are going to be created. And in the second half, I believe, I think Taki did a really good job. I think that the tempo had to go down a bit because it was just too high. And yeah, in the moment, I think the rain started coming down. So at that point, you just know everyone is going to shoot. The one thing about the, both of these teams, everyone loves to shoot. So far in this tournament, I think we've only had three goals. Three games where there, there hasn't been a goal from outside the box. The Denmark game, the England game, of course, and the um, game against France because that was an own goal. Every single game, every other game, we've had 10 games. The other seven games, sorry, we've had 11 games. The other eight games, we've all had a goal from outside the box. Um, yeah, then the 65th minute, the Galactico, Real Madrid player, Ada Goulet with another goal of the tournament contender. Again, the rain is dropping. You have to shoot. Those of you who have played football even in high school, if you ever, if it's raining, if there's a, the other goalie is weak, lazima washem corner. You have to, you know, his hands need to be to be lit up a bit. So, yeah, Gula's goal was insane. Top corner, left foot strike. Like, I didn't even know he was left footed like that. Like that was that was wild. And then Kvaraskili uh, Kvaraskili got a chance. Like towards, uh, sorry, Kochorashvili got a chance. These names are going to kill me. Um, a few minutes later. It was like just, again, his close control. Like the, the previous goal, you saw the stuff he was doing the, around the walls and stuff. This one, the ball comes and it drops is in the D. You expect him to just shoot and he like just chips the ball over the defender. And then when he hits it, it hits the post. Like his, his control is, this guy came into this tournament knowing, yo, I have to get a deal. I need to find out which team he plays for so that we see if this guy is getting a deal. But the way he came at this game, he said, like, yo, I'm getting a big money move. It doesn't matter. The kid is 24 years old. He plays for Levante. Uh, that man is going. Barcelona or Bournemouth, one of those two teams. Um, then, yeah, 96 minute, Georgia managed to get another shot. So at this point, like, the Georgia, uh, Turkey are just hanging on. Georgia managed to get a uh, shot. It comes off the post. And then there was an immense, immense, immense block from Summit Akaidin. We need to give a shout out to Akaidin because that block... That block sealed the game. Not only did it make sure they don't concede at that moment to make it 2-2, but then the next corner that came on, because he headed it and then it went out for a corner. The corner that comes on, the goalkeeper, the Georgian goalkeeper is sent forward, Bamadashvili is sent forward, and they lose the ball in the middle of the park, and the ball and it ends up coming to... Who was it? Who was it? Uh, 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 who scored the last goal? I know he's the number seven. I know he's the number seven. Um, Aktur Koglu. Aktur Koglu got the ball. I think, if I'm not wrong, it might even still be Akaidin who got that block. Um, I'm not sure. So, because the defender, the, the corner came in, it was headed to an attacker. He was trying to sort his feet out, then the two of them just robbed him, and the ball went straight to, um, to what's his name? Atukoglu, 
who ran the length of the field and actually no yeah he shot from outside the box so there's been there's been a goal from outside the box in this game so it's only been two games that haven't had oh sorry we already said ah sorry my bad my bad this game I had actually three goals from outside the box what am i talking about um but yeah a guy didn't block crucial 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 those are those moments in a game that you're like that that literally got them the three points because that was in the 96th minute and there's only six minutes added so man this so far game of the tournament i don't think it's even close this game has also produced two goals that are probably goal of the tournament and yeah man this 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 is euros i think we're officially in this is euros 11 games in portugal coming up next and then everyone coming up next and then everyone will have played one game euro 2024